Top 25 Automobile Interview Questions and Answers In the competitive field of the automobile industry, preparing for interviews is essential for success. This video will present a curated list of the top 25 interview questions frequently encountered by candidates. Alongside each question, comprehensive answers will be provided, highlighting key concepts and industry insights. Viewers will gain valuable knowledge to enhance their interview skills and confidence. 1. What inspired you to pursue a career in the automotive industry? My passion for the automotive industry began at a young age when I started tinkering with my family's cars. The intricate mechanics fascinated me, and I enjoyed the challenge of troubleshooting and repairing vehicles. I was inspired by the blend of technology, engineering, and creativity that goes into designing and building cars. This field offers endless opportunities for learning and growth, especially with the rapid advancements in electric and hybrid technologies. The satisfaction of solving complex problems and helping people through my work is incredibly fulfilling, motivating me to dedicate my career to this industry. 2. Can you explain the working principle of a four-stroke engine? A four-stroke engine operates through four distinct phases, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. During the intake stroke, the intake valve opens, allowing the air fuel mixture to enter the cylinder. Next, the compression stroke occurs, where the piston compresses the mixture, increasing its temperature and pressure. The spark plug ignites the mixture during the power stroke, forcing the piston down and generating power. Finally, the exhaust stroke expels the burnt gases through the open exhaust valve, this cycle repeats, powering the engine efficiently and reliably. 3. What's the difference between a petrol and a diesel engine? Petrol engines ignite fuel using a spark plug, while diesel engines rely on compression to ignite fuel. The fuel-air mixture in petrol engines is mixed before entering the cylinder, whereas diesel engines inject fuel directly into the compressed air. This allows diesel engines to operate at higher compression ratios, leading to better fuel efficiency and torque. Petrol engines tend to be lighter and quieter, making them suitable for personal vehicles. Diesel engines, known for their durability and efficiency, are often used in heavy-duty vehicles, such as trucks and buses, due to their ability to handle high loads. 4. How do you diagnose and fix a car that won't start? Diagnosing a car that won't start begins with checking the battery. Ensure the terminals are clean and secure, and test the battery voltage. Next, inspect the starter motor and ignition system, including spark plugs and wires. If these components are functioning, examine the fuel system for any issues, such as a clogged fuel filter or a failed fuel pump. If the engine turns over but doesn't start, consider checking for error codes using an OBD2 scanner. Once the problem is identified, repairs may involve replacing faulty components or addressing wiring issues. 5. What happens if gasoline is used in a diesel engine? Using gasoline in a diesel engine can lead to severe damage. Diesel engines rely on a specific fuel type for proper combustion and lubrication. Gasoline lacks the lubrication properties of diesel, which can result in increased wear and tear on components like the fuel pump and injectors. Additionally, gasoline has a lower flashpoint, causing premature ignition and knocking. This can lead to catastrophic engine failure, requiring extensive repairs. If gasoline is accidentally added, it's crucial to avoid starting the engine and have the fuel system drained and cleaned immediately. 6. Why are steering wheels round? Steering wheels are round primarily because this shape provides the most efficient means for drivers to control their vehicle. A round wheel allows for smooth and consistent input, enabling precise steering. When turning, a circular design ensures that the driver can easily grip the wheel and apply force in any direction. Additionally, a round shape allows for a more uniform distribution of forces, which enhances the vehicle's stability during maneuvers. This design also helps facilitate the ergonomic comfort of the driver, allowing for more intuitive control while driving. 7. Can you explain the significance of octane and cetane numbers in fuel? Octane and cetane numbers are crucial indicators of fuel performance in internal combustion engines. The octane number measures a fuel's resistance to knocking or premature ignition in petrol engines. Higher octane fuels allow for more aggressive engine tuning, leading to better performance and efficiency. On the other hand, cetane number applies to diesel fuels, indicating how quickly the fuel ignites upon injection. A higher cetane number results in smoother engine operation and reduced emissions. Understanding these values helps in selecting the right fuel for optimized engine performance. 8. Why are large tires used on the rear axle of heavy vehicles? Large tires are used on the rear axle of heavy vehicles primarily for enhanced load-bearing capacity and stability. The greater surface area of larger tires distributes the vehicle's weight more evenly, reducing ground pressure and minimizing soil compaction, which is particularly important for off-road applications. Additionally, larger tires improve traction, helping heavy vehicles maintain control under challenging conditions. This design choice also aids in managing torque during acceleration and provides better handling, especially when navigating inclines or uneven surfaces. 9. How does a clutch system work, and what is a dual-clutch transmission? A clutch system enables the driver to engage and disengage the engine from the transmission, allowing smooth gear shifts. When the clutch pedal is pressed, 
It disconnects the engine's power from the wheels, preventing any driving force while changing gears. A dual-clutch transmission, DCT, features two separate clutches for odd and even gears, allowing for quicker shifts without interrupting power delivery. This system enhances acceleration and efficiency, providing a more responsive driving experience compared to traditional manual or automatic transmissions. 10. What do you mean by independent suspension, and why is it important? Independent suspension refers to a vehicle suspension system where each wheel is able to move up and down independently of the others. This design enhances ride quality and handling by allowing wheels to adapt to different road conditions without affecting the opposite wheel. For example, when one wheel encounters a bump, it can move independently without transferring that motion to the other wheel. This results in better traction, improved stability, and a smoother ride, especially during cornering or on uneven surfaces. Independent suspension is essential for performance and comfort in modern vehicles. 11. Describe a time when you made a mistake during a repair and how you fixed it. During a brake pad replacement, I mistakenly installed the wrong size pads, resulting in a grinding noise when the customer drove the vehicle. Upon realizing the error, I immediately contacted the customer to explain the situation and assure them I would resolve it promptly. I ordered the correct pads, apologized for the inconvenience, and offered a complimentary service as goodwill. After replacing the pads, I conducted a thorough test drive to ensure everything was functioning correctly. This experience taught me the importance of double-checking parts before installation. 12. How would you handle an angry customer who complained about your work? Dealing with an angry customer requires patience and empathy. First, I would listen actively to their concerns without interrupting, ensuring they feel heard. Acknowledging their frustration is crucial. I would then apologize for any inconvenience caused and assure them that I am committed to resolving the issue. After understanding the specifics of their complaint, I would offer a solution, whether it be a repair, a refund, or another form of compensation. Maintaining professionalism and clear communication throughout the interaction helps rebuild trust and demonstrates my dedication to customer satisfaction. 13. What's your process for prioritizing tasks during busy periods? During busy periods, I assess tasks based on urgency and importance. First, I identify critical repairs and customer deadlines, prioritizing those that impact safety or compliance. Then, I evaluate ongoing projects and their progress, allocating resources effectively. I also communicate with team members to ensure everyone is aligned and aware of their responsibilities. Adapting to changing situations is crucial, so I remain flexible, allowing for adjustments as needed. Effective time management tools and checklists help keep track of tasks, ensuring no detail is overlooked while maintaining a high standard of work. 14. How do you stay updated with the latest automotive technologies and repair techniques? Staying current in the automotive industry requires a multifaceted approach. Regularly attending workshops and training sessions offered by manufacturers ensures knowledge of the latest advancements. Subscribing to industry journals and online forums provides insights into emerging technologies and repair techniques. Engaging with professional networks, such as mechanics associations, allows for shared experiences and solutions among peers. Utilizing online courses or webinars is beneficial for learning about new tools and diagnostic equipment. Actively participating in automotive expos or trade shows can also provide first-hand experience with cutting-edge innovations. 15. What experience do you have with computer-controlled test equipment? Computer-controlled test equipment is crucial in modern automotive diagnostics. I have hands-on experience using various scan tools and diagnostic software that interface with vehicle onboard computers. This includes assessing fault codes, real-time data monitoring, and performing advanced functions like programming key fobs and recalibrating sensors. I've utilized oscilloscopes and multimeters to analyze electrical systems and troubleshoot issues effectively. My training emphasizes understanding how these systems communicate, enabling me to diagnose problems efficiently and ensure vehicles meet performance standards. 16. Can you walk me through a standard test drive procedure? A standard test drive procedure typically begins with a brief conversation to understand the customer's concerns. Next, inspect the vehicle's interior and controls to ensure everything is functioning properly. Before driving, check the tire pressure and fluid levels. During the drive, observe the vehicle's performance, noting any unusual noises, vibrations, or handling issues. Test acceleration, braking, and steering responsiveness in various conditions. After completing the drive, return and discuss findings with the customer providing recommendations for repairs or further diagnostics as needed. Always ensure safety is prioritized throughout the process. 17. How do you ensure safety protocols are followed when working on vehicles? Ensuring safety protocols when working on vehicles starts with a thorough understanding of manufacturer guidelines and industry standards. Regular training sessions for all team members keep everyone informed about the latest safety practices. Personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves, goggles, and steel-toed boots must be worn at all times. Workspaces should be organized and free of hazards to prevent accidents. Additionally, regular safety audits and checklists help identify potential risks, 
ensuring that every step of the repair process adheres to safety regulations. Safety should always be a top priority. 18. What's your experience with electric or hybrid vehicle technologies? Electric and hybrid vehicle technologies have become increasingly important in the automotive industry. I have experience working with both types of vehicles, including understanding their unique components such as electric motors, battery management systems, and regenerative braking. My training included diagnosing electrical issues, performing software updates, and ensuring that the vehicles operate efficiently. Additionally, I have learned about the environmental benefits of these technologies, contributing to greener transportation solutions. I actively participate in workshops to stay informed about advancements in this rapidly evolving field. 19. How do you approach troubleshooting complex mechanical problems? When troubleshooting complex mechanical problems, I start by gathering as much information as possible about the symptoms. This includes listening to the customer's description of the issue and performing a visual inspection of the vehicle. I then use diagnostic tools to check for error codes and perform tests on related systems. Breaking down the problem into smaller components helps isolate the fault. I also consult service manuals and technical resources. Collaboration with colleagues can provide additional insights, ensuring a comprehensive approach to finding the root cause of the issue. 20. Can you describe your experience with in-depth engine and transmission repairs? In my previous role as an automotive technician, I focused extensively on in-depth repairs of both engines and transmissions. I have worked on various engine types, diagnosing issues such as misfires, overheating, and oil leaks. My experience includes performing complete rebuilds, replacing gaskets, and adjusting timing. For transmissions, I have handled both automatic and manual systems, including fluid changes, band adjustments, and complete overhauls. Each project involved meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that all components met specifications and functioned effectively after repairs. 21. What steps do you take to keep a car in good working condition through routine maintenance? Routine maintenance is crucial for keeping a car in optimal condition. First, I perform regular oil changes, typically every 3,000 to 5,000 miles, ensuring the engine runs smoothly. Next, I inspect and replace air filters and fuel filters as needed to improve efficiency. Tire pressure and tread depth are checked frequently to enhance safety and fuel economy. I also recommend regular brake inspections and fluid level checks, including coolant, brake, and transmission fluids. Finally, I ensure that all lights and signals are functioning properly to maintain safety on the road. 22. How do you determine if an issue is caused by the alternator or the battery? To determine if an issue is caused by the alternator or the battery, start by checking the battery's voltage using a multimeter. A healthy battery should read around 12.6 volts when fully charged. If the voltage is low, it may need charging or replacement. Next, check the alternator's output while the engine is running. It should produce between 13.8 and 14.4 volts. If the alternator is not generating sufficient voltage, it may be faulty. Additionally, inspect connections and wiring for corrosion or damage, as these can also lead to issues. 23. What are the potential causes of an overheating engine? An overheating engine can result from several factors. Common causes include low coolant levels, which may occur due to leaks or evaporation. A malfunctioning thermostat can prevent coolant circulation, leading to overheating. Additionally, a failing water pump may not effectively circulate coolant through the engine. Clogged radiator passages can impede heat dissipation, while a broken radiator fan can restrict airflow. Damaged hoses or a blown head gasket can also contribute to overheating. Regular maintenance and inspections can help identify these issues early and prevent severe engine damage. 24. How do you recommend tires for specific driving conditions or older cars? When recommending tires for specific driving conditions or older cars, consider factors such as climate, terrain, and driving style. For wet or snowy conditions, suggest tires with deeper treads and better grip. In contrast, for dry and warm climates, performance tires with a flatter profile may be ideal. For older cars, ensure the recommended tires match the original equipment specifications for size and load rating. Additionally, assess the vehicle's suspension and weight distribution to ensure optimal performance and safety. Regularly reviewing customer needs and preferences is essential for tailored recommendations. 25. Can you explain the process of performing a state physical inspection on a vehicle? Performing a state physical inspection involves several key steps. First, verify that the vehicle is in compliance with state requirements. Next, conduct a thorough visual inspection of the exterior, checking for damage, rust, and proper lighting. Then, assess the tires for tread depth and condition. After that, inspect the underbody for any signs of leaks or corrosion. Finally, ensure that all required documentation, such as registration and insurance, is present. If any issues are detected, they must be addressed before the vehicle can pass the inspection. In the competitive world of the automobile industry, being well prepared for interviews can set you apart from other candidates. By familiarizing yourself with the top 25 interview questions and their answers, you can enhance your chances of making a great impression. Remember, confidence and knowledge about the industry are key to success. If you found this video helpful, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Your support helps us create valuable resources for automotive enthusiasts and job seekers alike. Thank you for watching.